Guys, finally, welcome to Tropic Star. Here we go. Right, they're delicious. He's back home, but for some reason, beautiful roost good fish. Check it out, we are in the beautiful country of Panama. We left the world famous Tropic Star Fishing Lodge this morning out of Piñas Bay, absolutely gorgeous. And we're actually chasing tuna today. We just ran about 10 miles offshore. We got Captain Fidel up there. We got his first mate, Dario. Ricky's on board, Dennis is behind the wheel. And uh, this is actually our fourth day fishing in Panama, having the time of our lives. So what we're gonna start out today doing Ricky and I have something called stick baits on our rods. Just resembles a little bait fish and we're gonna be casting him to these tuna. There's a uh, spinner dolphin just jumped behind uh, Dennis. There's birds working everywhere. And basically Fidel's gonna be just kind of working this area where there's a lot of birds and spinner dolphin. And we're looking for these tuna basically breaching the water and just blowing up. And whenever we see that, we're just gonna cast into that action. Normally we'd be throwing something like a popper, but as you guys see, it's a little bit windy and rough out here. So something like this that kind of gets under the water surface is going to be prime time. I'm just going to cast this out and just basically reel it back towards me. Let's catch them up, babe. Pumping out the water when it was last calm, and now that it's rough. Yeah, it's they're like... doing belly flops. Yeah. Oh, right there. Oh, I'm yeah. on. Rick's eight. <laughs> um, oh, oh yeah, they're blowing up right there. First two fish. Oh, heavens, Nicole. Well, I just lost my first fish of the day. I never really got tight on it. Oh, oh there they gosh, are. They're, they're jumping out up everywhere. Like crazy. There's birds working everywhere. Tuna everywhere. A lot of stuff going on. You got the birds, the tuna, and the dolphin all feeding on the exact same thing. Tuna on! Oh my gosh. You guys, there's yellow fins jumping everywhere. This is crazy. Oh! Susan has. Oh, oh no. Ah! <laughs> yeah, babe. It's harder to like hook them on this. What a sight to oh, see. There it goes. <laughs> oh yeah, baby, we're doubled up on yellow fins. Woo! This is so much fun, like a kid in a candy store. You take a fisherman to a feeding frenzy of anything, but seeing tuna like this just air out over and over again, birds working, it's the stuff that you dream of as a kid. Yeah, I don't think there's much better, especially visually appearance appealing. Another thing, you guys have seen us catch some big tunas on the channel, but catching 10, like 20 pounders, much more manageable. It's fun, you get a lot of bites. Let go of them. Where are you? Come and here. Everybody knows the best part about a, fight, a fish fight is that first drag run, that first bite that gets your adrenaline going. And this is basically that over and over and over again. <laughs> you see that boat and Our fish want to do the same thing, huh? Yeah. It's like musical rhymes. <laughs> Come here. 
Oh, he's a chunker. Gorgeous colors. Oh, oh boy. <laughs> Let's go! Gracias, Dario. So what he's gonna do with this bat right here, kind of stun them, that way they don't freak out in the boat, and it also is good to preserve the meat. If you have a tuna, it's 80, 90 degrees out here, and he's batting himself and beating himself up on the deck, that, might, that meat will turn white and he beats himself up. It's not good. You want a good quality product? Kill your fish instantly. And that's what that bat does. You guys see that fish is stone cold dead. All right, guys, doubled up on yellow fins with my babe Brookie. She's just getting her hands wet because uh, <laughs> we're all a little bloody here. But what a way to start the morning. Both doubled up. Come in here, Brooke. No, I want you to be in here. Having the time of our lives, me and Brookie side by side, catching fish. And uh, yeah, you can't ask for more. Dolphins in the background, beautiful out here, good mates. And you know we're gonna be in good with all this fresh sashimi. So Fidel, he's constantly looking oh, up there. As soon oh as my I hit gosh! The water. <laughs> Fidel's constantly looking to see what the birds are doing because a lot of times you see birds and tuna, or you see birds and dolphins, but there's no tuna. You gotta look for those fish that are actually breaching the surface. Oh yeah, baby. This is what tuna fishing dreams are made of. There it is, right on top! Oh my <laughs> gosh! You gotta love that noise. So the time of year that we're here right now, this is the size tuna that you're gonna be catching. They do get giant yellowfin tuna here, but this time of year, we got this size tuna, as well as they have an incredible marlin fishery here, which is really what they're known for, but we're not in marlin season, so that's why we've been doing a lot of inshore fishing, as well as coming offshore and catching these, I guess you'd call them school, schooly sized tuna. charging on top. Nothing more exciting than a tuna when you first hook it. They're so unpredictable. They just go ballistic. amazing too you guys see all the predators around these dolphins don't attack these tuna at all We just spent the morning tuna fishing, got enough 
for dinner in the boat and uh, we were running in shore and we saw a sailfish. It looks like Dario might have him in this. Oh my gosh, it's right there. Dario's got a sailfish on. Aki? Yeah. Feeding him? He's on. He's on. Ready for the jump, Dennis? Oh, you can't ask for more. Morning full of tuna. Now a Pacific sail. And this sail has no idea he's hooked because these sailfish are much bigger than the sailfish we have back home. Oh! oh. <laughs> Ready? He's going to do it again. He's going to do it again. Whoa! Yep. There's another one in front of him. Did you see? So we were running in shore like I told you guys. Dario got a goggle eye or blue runner out of the live well, just pitched it right back to him, and these sailfish are so hot on it. Such a gorgeous animal. Yeah, the sailfish is super deep right now. So back at home, it's kind of customary to fly flags when you catch sailfish. Um, you always see people come in the inlet and they got some flags flying for every single sailfish that they catch. Well here, they fly a flag for every single species of fish that you catch. So every day we've been flying like a rooster fish flag. If you caught a kubera, they have kubera flags. So Did they today have we'll finally... Flags? Um, I don't remember. But today we'll be flying a sailfish flag as well. Pacific sailfish get way bigger than the Atlantic sailfish. I'd say their average size fish here, 80 pounds. Like 70 to 100 pounds is very common. Down by us, I would say our average size fish is 30 to 50 pounds. They're not nearly as big. And I also feel like their Pacific sails are slightly darker, it seems like. Oh my gosh, look to the south, they're jumping everywhere. You see them? Yeah, look, 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 look there. Dennis, Dennis, look, look, he might jump. He's going up, he's going up. Yep, yep, yep. to keep up with it. He's right here. He's gonna jump again probably. Look at him wiggling. Oh, he's gonna jump. All right, so Dennis is getting his underwater housing ready. And I gotta seriously thank this guy. Dennis has been the hardest working cameraman ever. Uh, last year I hired him, went through a bunch of applicants, me and Dennis just hit it off real quick and this guy is an animal, works extremely hard. He already got in the water this morning to get on the tuna, now he's getting in the water with the sailfish and I'm stoked to be able to share just this video content with you guys. Careful Dennis! Hey. He wants to jump again, for sure. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so right now we're just reviving him. Fidel's got the boat in gear. I got the sailfish's head in the water, just kind of Letting the water flow past its big or past its gills. And look at how beautiful this fish is. Those purple stripes on them. Huge, huge, powerful animal. Got a bunch of beautiful jumps out of them. These things got a huge sail. And they actually use that to kind of corral baits and to scare them. And he uses this bill that he has 
to slash it baits. Huge pectoral fins, just the epitome of a big pelagic fish. Look at that, massive pectoral fins. There we go, Dennis has just taken the final little steps, pushed his tail, and that thing is swimming off strong. So the way that these guys get these sailfish, there's a frigate bird right there, and like I was saying, you physically see the sailfish just jumping, free jumping. If you look out in the distance, they drive to that area, Dario just put out a live goggle eye and we're slow trolling it in hopes that one's gonna be in the area and finds it. Those birds right there, frigate birds, are the best fishermen in the sky, and they're amazing. You can just see them, they're perfectly suited to just glide up there all day, have laser-like vision, and you can see their little head swiveling. And they're not looking necessarily for bait fish, they're looking for sailfish, they're looking for tuna, they're looking for dolphin, they're looking for those big silhouettes of those pelagic fish to help them find bait. Then they find the bait flurry. So they're more so looking for the fish, and they're gonna use the fish as like a fish finder to find the bait, which is really cool. Did you guys see it? No. It was on the left short on that outrigger. Oh, no. Want me to reel it in? No, no. All the way? Yeah. Oh, All the He's way. on it. He's on it. Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. He's huge. Hooked up on another sailfish. We had the teasers out and Victor seen him come up on one of the teasers. And Dario pitched out a goggle eye and sure enough he ate it. Guys, that was the last bait we're fishing in Panama. We decided to call a little bit early. Normally we fish until three o'clock, but we got a lot of stuff to pack and clean. And you know, when you come here, especially at a lodge like this, you actually want to enjoy the lodge itself. And uh, we still got to fillet fish and do a bunch of other stuff, but I want to actually enjoy the experience, give everyone some time to relax. Dennis has got to clean all the camera gear. We want to sit by the pool and have some margaritas, you know, and live it up. We'll see you guys there. All right, guys, I caught my first sailfish today, a big 100-pound sailfish. So as the sign says, first billfish, you have to walk the plank. So here we go. You guys ready? Wait, 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 wait. We need, we need to get the captain. The captain needs to push oh, him Oh, he's off. long gone. Oh. Yeah. You can push him, and you're oh. the captain now. All right, I'm yeah. the captain. All right. All right. Right, hold on. <laughs> ready? One, two, oh! ah! <laughs> Oh, feels good. Nice clip. All smiles here, huh? Good job. Good job. Good job. Nate went on the kayak today. What'd you get? Uh, dude, I caught more fish. I caught almost fish almost every cast. Tons of snapper, tons of jacks, tons like all kinds of weird 
little reef rock fish, some kind of blenny looking thing, but the best was the uh, about a 25 pound Kubera. Caught it on a little four and a half inch zoom fluke, a half ounce jig head, 20 pound test line. You should see the rod. The rod is like a crappie rod. <laughs> it was pretty fun. That's awesome. Yeah, good day. Elias too. Uh, yeah, one Kubera for me. I think like eight, nine snapper species, all between five and 15 pounds. Just all every cast with like that four to five inch zoom flukes and diesel minnows and a bunch of jack ravals. Had yellowfin tuna blowing up at the kayak. It was nonstop, just all little casting and a lot of fun today. Decided to lose every good fish today. <laughs> we, that, how's that different from any other day? <laughs> <laughs> 20 pound Corvina next to the boat. Swiped out with the gaff twice. Dang. And then it tail walked and threw the jig. Phil caught his first sail, that's why he just jumped in the water. Then we moved on, we caught a bunch of little rooster fish. Ended up catching a big, like 25 pound rooster fish all on bait. Um, then caught a like 10, 12 pound blue trevally on a on a sick bait. I like that they fly flags for every species. It's cool, you come in and you know exactly. You could see Phil and Ryan smile before you even see their smile because you see their flags on their boat. Our boat's up there, man. Oh, we saw it. I saw that red Kubera flag. Yeah. Yeah, that, that was sick. So, Dennis just got done swimming with probably the coolest thing you could ever swim with. 50 pound rooster fish and a 50 pound Kubera just chilling under the dock. They feed them, they're their pets every day. Do not fish for them though. They're just, they're little, little babies at the Tropic Star Lodge. Um, the guys that cut up the tuna and all the fish, they just toss it in and these fish just sit here all day long waiting to get fed. And you know that I can't come to any destination and not fillet my own fish. So most of the guides, they actually fillet the tuna while we're out there on the boat. But I wanted to do one tuna fillet at least myself. Okay. And so we're filleting up this yellowfin. I got eight inch Dexter wide knife. And I can tell you what, we've been eating tuna almost every single day whether it's for dinner or an appetizer, and I, I don't think I can get tired of eating tuna every single day. So I just went down the midline of the fish, now I'm going down the, uh, the bottom loin. And so tuna you can fillet a couple different ways. Some people, what they'll do with a bigger tuna is they'll actually cut it right down the middle, but this guy's not that big, so I actually just prefer to have it kind of as one piece. So I just separated, as you can imagine, both loins from bottom to top. Get over that thick backbone. Now I just put my knife right here in the middle. And look at that. Oh yeah. Look at that. Dennis, we got a little piece for sashimi right here. Just missing some soy sauce and that's it. As fresh as it gets. And you guys can actually save 20% off all Dexter knives. Use my code Landshark linked below. When skinning tuna, since I have this as a whole piece, a really easy thing you can do is take your knife and go right down the middle on one side of the bloodline and not go through the skin but I'm actually going to skin this tuna from the inside out. So I'm basically just rolling my knife and I'm skinning it from the inside out right here. I'm kind of just rolling that meat off of the skin. Just like that. And this right here, this is that real thick bloodline. You don't really want this in your meat, especially if you're gonna have it as sashimi or sushi. So we tend to just leave this here and it's not wasteful because you know what? We're feeding the 50 pound rooster so that way he can become a 70 pound rooster one day. And we will see you guys at dinner. Life does not get better than this right here. Mango quadras in the pool for a hot day of fishing. Good. Mm -hmm. Delicious. Taste the spot. And they're not weak either. <laughs> <laughs>
Cheers, everyone, to a great trip. Thank you all for coming. Final adventure of this fall at the Big adventure. Check it out, guys. This is our last meal here at Tropic Star Lodge. Everybody's got a little bit something different. Ricky and I got some panko crusted fish. Looks like a little lemon basil pesto pasta. <laughs> Sean's got the catch of the day. I think Nate's got some pork tenderloin. Ooh. And Elias. Chicken chorizo. Oh, is that chicken yeah, chorizo? That's the chorizo. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I thought you had that. That looked really good. Everything looks amazing. Yeah, the plating. This is the filet mignon. We all went with the filet. Oh, I didn't know that was an option. <laughs> didn't read. I guess they don't teach you how to read in Oklahoma. <laughs> yeah. It is Amber Jack. Amber Jack? Yes. All right. Look, listen, I got to say something. People at Tropic Star Lodge, this is a big money place. They don't turn their nose up to Amberjack, and everybody at home in the States thinks Amberjack is a trash fish. If they're serving it at one of the finest resorts in the world, that means that you should be eating it too. So let's give this a go. That is true. It's funny because Amberjack is like really highly sought after here, and they even eat it as, as sashimi. Oh, shit, it's dark. <laughs> Oh, yeah. It's good. It's very lean and firm, but good. Nice little panko crust. Dip it in that pesto sauce. How's that filet, boys? Lost for words. It's just a wonderful experience here. We're all exhausted, but drinking some wine, eating some food, sharing some laughs, and, you know, tell them. Tell them more stories from all the fishing that we've been doing. I don't know what else you want here. And I want to keep a round of applause and just give me a couple of minutes on this because this is the most valuable round of applause. Ladies and gents, this lodge has been here for 60 years this year. Since 1963, when this lodge opened, it has been one of the longest continuously running lodges in Central and South America, if not the Americas. There are 313 world records here, more than anywhere else in the world. The magical thing about this place, yes, it's got world records, and yes, it's got this incredible fish out here that is literally like dinosaurs in the middle of absolutely nowhere, because we are in the middle of absolutely nowhere. You guys are all together, we've made a lot of friends, a lot of people have just met, and this is what fishing is about. Yes, it's a lot of fun out there, but it's also about making the memories. It's about having these insane stories that you can tell around the dinner table each night. Can we have a round of applause for Chef Gabriel? Thank you. And what is this amazing team, Chef Melacho? They are going to put something on fire this evening. Ladies and gents, welcome to the Baked Alaska. Photos yeah. <laughs> It looks like Neapolitan. I gotta smell everything. Everything. He loves the smell stuff. Were you gonna put my head in there? Well, maybe. <laughs> Did you get That's not video? nice. <laughs> this is not what I was expecting the inside of it to look like. It's ice cream. It looks like Neapolitan ice cream. Mm. A little bit of cake. Oh, see, I had no sushi. I was too busy getting up there. Baked Alaska. <laughs> First bite of baked Alaska. You can taste the liquor on it. They lit the lick they lit the liquor over the ice cream and taste amazing. Caught your very first bear, or your first rooster, or your first sailfish. Oh there you go, Lonnie. It is not your last night's night, so you will, we will keep that for Friday. <laughs> <laughs> Muscle and bone, my man. Muscle and bone. <laughs> Shawnee Lawless, my man. 25 pound rooster. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. 
hand. My hand. Okay. On the kayak. There we go. Wow. It's these legs, those it's arms, going on the, fridge, the heart, right it's there. all there. <laughs> going on the fridge. I better be framed on the bloody wall. <laughs> tell you what. Jeff again, Jeffrey Roberts, 25 pounds. But you also got a 30 pound Kubera. <laughs> Congratulations. You came, you saw, and you conquered. <laughs> I think that deserves two speeches. Uh, <laughs> yeah. As you guys see, it is nothing but smiles at this lodge. This is Ross, the grounds manager, handing out some certificates to people who either caught their first of a species or biggest. It's a nice last day tradition they have at the lodge. And once again, huge shout out to Tropic Star for this trip. This place is incredible. The nature, the fishing, the beauty, the resort. It does not miss a beat and I'll have all of their stuff linked below. And thank you guys once again from the bottom of my heart because without you watching these videos none of this would be possible and i wouldn't be able to make these cool videos and experiences for you guys so thank you and i'll see you in the next one